and here we've got a crater-shaped lesion, right? It cups down into the dermis. It's got a, a, a volcano of keratin in the middle, okay? It invades just a little bit at the edges. So what do you like to call these things? Yeah, this can be considered a keratoacanthoma, particularly if it arose quickly and you can see the whole thing. I was trained to call these squamous cell carcinoma keratoacanthoma type. Other people vehemently disagree with that and are sure these are benign because many times they regress. The big problem I have is A, if I can't see the bottom, and B, if I don't know the whole history, which is almost always the case. So I feel in all of my derms that I work with, treat these like squames. But I have heard, I think Elston and some other people have talked about examples where it was like on the finger and they decided to wait and it regressed on its own instead of you know amputating Part of the finger doing something real aggressive. So I do keep that in mind and bring up keratoacanthoma as a type when it's in a sensitive site or something where they may handle it differently. But most of the time, um, my dermatologists will treat them like squames, okay? They have glassy atypia and they're crater shaped and they're full of uh, keratin. They don't usually have a acanthalytic pattern and they don't really infiltrate much at the bottom. If you see it really infiltrating out, I don't like to call that. Or real marked atypia, I don't like to call those um, a keratoacanthoma. Other things people find useful is the presence of little cluster. Oh, I thought I saw some clusters of neutrophils that get entrapped. And also sometimes elastic fibers from the dermis will get trapped up into the peripheral edges of these lesions. So whether you call it a keratoacanthoma or squamous cell, keratoacanthoma type or whatever, um, that's what it is.